Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. This is Dr. Halima. Today's lecture is number four. But uh, this time, I can promise it's an interesting... Uh, uh, it is interesting, not as dry as the previous lectures. Uh, hopefully, you will find it interesting. And the title of this uh, lecture is Elements of Translation. We will uh, cover the following points in this lecture. Uh, learning outcomes, as usual. And then I'll give you an introduction, a very short introduction to uh, elements of translation. And then we will go right away into discussing the six elements of translation, which are the source language, the source text, and the translator, the translated text, the language of translation, and the target language. And then we will finish off the lecture by seeing the interaction of the six elements uh, of translation. Now, uh, by the end of this lecture, you should have knowledge of the six elements of translation, and you should uh, show some understanding of the interaction between these six elements of translation. So, by the end of this lecture, you should ask yourself, do I know the six elements of translation? Do I have some kind of understanding of the interaction among these six elements? If you can answer this question, then you are all right. You have learned something. If you, if you can't, then you should really go through the slice again and again until you achieve the learning outcomes. Now, regarding elements of translation, in general, in general, there are two types of elements. Linguistic element, known as a linguistic verbal sign involving SL, the source language, and TL, the target language. And the situational or contextual element involving both SL and TL. This element determines translatability, not the linguistic sign. Now, what concerns us from this particular point is the situational element, because this element determines translatability, not the linguistic uh, aspect of it. Now, the situational elements of translation are, very briefly, Semantic element, semant, semant, semantic element or semantic field, physical environment, social reality, phonetic realization, the addressee. Now, all these points will become clearer to you by the end of the lecture when we go through each element separately. Now, As I mentioned in my uh, uh, introduction, the six elements of translation, we will be going in more detail about the source language. We will discuss the source text. We will uh, see the, uh, what, what is uh, related to the translator as a, as a major element in the uh, translation, then the translated text, then the language of translation, then the target language. Now these are the elements of translation. Let's take number one, the source of the source language. The source language, it has the initials of SL. So whenever you have SL in a translation textbook means the source language. What is the source language? Now, I would like you. To, I would. We would like. I would like you to agree with me that we have examples of Arabic and English. Arabic is the source language, and English is the target language. If, if you want to translate from Arabic into English. Then if you want to translate from English into Arabic, then the source language is English and the target language is Arabic. So 
it is the language to which the text to be translated belongs. The source language exists as a language regardless of translation. Now, regardless of translation, the source language is there. Arabic is there, English is there, whether we translate from it or not. Any source language, whether Arabic, English, French, or Chinese, or whatever, has, has its own meanings, grammar, sounds, culture, tradition. Even if it doesn't have a, a, a writing system or a linguistic study or linguistic studies. Now, the source language, again, is the starting point of any translation. The starting point of any. It means that you can't translate unless there is a source language, can you? So, the source language is the starting point of any translation. And the source language constitutes an essential point when investigating the translation phenomena. Again, if you want to investigate or do research on translation, you have to use the source language. So, the source language, these, these are the main points relating to the source language. I hope they are clear and straightforward. Now, element number two, the source text. So we have a source language, okay, Arabic. Now we want to take a text, a source text from Arabic to translate it into English. Now the source text is the text which has been chosen for translation. So we have so many texts in Arabic and we want to translate a text from Arabic into English. So we choose one text from Arabic for translation. This text could be spoken or written message, or even both. Now, the source text, we take the source text from the, the source language and we give, we give it to who? To the translator. You don't give it to anybody. To the translator, to do what? To translate it. The translator doesn't choose the text. You give the text to the translator, especially in companies. But the translator, of course, if you, if you want to translate on your own, it's fine. It is out of your interest. If you, if you want to translate poetry, or if you want to translate, let's say, uh, uh, religious text out of your interest, this is fine or if you want to do translation for research purposes. But this happens very rarely. What happens is normally users or clients go to the company, uh, to, uh, to translation company, and they say, please translate to me this text. The translator say, okay, I will do that. Now the source text, the source text you take it from Arabic, what does it do? It limits the translator. In other words, the translator cannot change parts of the of the text. If you say translate the this fi these five pages, he cannot translate only two or three pages, or uh, he cannot delete or omit one paragraph or two. He can't. The source text is the very central and initial point for the start of the translation process. Okay, the source language is number one. The source text is number two. But the source text is the initial starting point for the translator to start his process of translation. Therefore, understanding the source text is the first step in the process of translation. So we have source language, number one, element one. We have a source text, number two, which is very, very important. The translator has to use this source text, has to understand it, has to use it as a starting point. 
So it is essential, it is central for any translator to do any translation. Ah, now, here we are. We have element number three. What is it? It is the translator. Now it is you who steps in the process. Hopefully, if you are interested in, be, uh, in becoming a translator. Now, the translator is the most important element in translation. Without him, translation doesn't happen, of course. Of course. So, the translator is crucial. He is the initial knower of two languages or more. He could have the ability to move between two languages. The translator is a bilingual or a multilingual individual. The translator's knowledge should include knowledge of general linguistics, descriptive methodology and methodology of research applicable to source and target language. The translator has knowledge of the source language and the target language and culture. Cultures. Now, in a nutshell, the translator, although he is element three, but without him, no translation takes place. Because he is to initiate a translation, because he knows two languages, he knows or he has access to two different cultures, languages, and he has knowledge of general linguistics, methodology, and of methodology of research applicable to both the source language and the target language. So you, as a future translator, are very important, because without you, translation can't happen. Even somebody might say, well, how about machine translation or computer-aided translation? No. Without a translator, I'm afraid to say no translation can take place at all. No matter how clever or smart the machine translation is. Because I know and I've seen machine translations. They are useless. Without the help of a human being translator, they can't be used. But we will talk about machine translation in due course, inshallah. Okay, so we have now element number one, the source language. Element number two, the source text. Element number three, the translator. Element number four, element number four is the translated text, the TT, the product. The translated text is the text which result from the translation process. Clear? It is the actual definite material written or spoken which has been produced by conveying the meanings of the source text in terms of another language and culture. The translated text changes the receiver or addressees to a new receiver or addressee of a new language. The translated text is a very good source for investigating the translation process and the translator's ability to translate. Very briefly, very briefly, the translated text is the product, is what you see on paper. It is the result of the translator's processing uh, operation. He processes, he puts his ideas or his translation onto paper. Now it is actual, it is definite, it is there. This is what we mean the translated text. This is a translated text reflects the source text, but it is not addressed to the 
uh, to the source language people. No. It is addressed to new uh, people, like new addresses, new receivers of the English language. To put it more simply, you want to translate from Arabic this text into English. Okay. Source language, element one. Source text, element two. Translator, element three. Now the translator takes the element two and works on it, processes it, and produces what? It produces a translated text. This translated text is addressed to who? To the English speaking people. Not to Arabic speakers, but rather to English speakers where they can read this text in English. And this text, this translated text, uh, reflects, two langu uh, reflects the culture and the language of the source, lang uh, source language and source text. Now, if you want to do research or investigation or uh, uh, interested in translation, the translated text is a very important point you can use as a reference to your research or to your investigation. Now, this is now element number five. Number five is the language of translation. So we have element one, the source language, the source text, the translator, the source, the Translated text, now the language of translation. The language of translation, look at, the, look at the slide, what it says. It is an abstraction obtained via the study of translated text. An abstraction, it means it is somewhere in the mind, but it, is, it doesn't exist. It is not a source language or a target language. You can't say this is, if you are translate, if when you have translated a text from Arabic into English, you can't say the language of this text is English. I know it is written in English, but the language of translation is not, is abstract. It is not a source language, it is not Arabic, it is not English, it is not, but, it is not completely independent. It is not completely independent. Independent. It is closely tied to the source language via the source text and to the target language via the translated text. In other words, it has some features and characteristics of the source language and some features and characteristics of the target language. It is tied to it. It is not an independent language. It is based on the study of translated text. The language of translation is based on the study of the translated text. The, trans the study of the language of translation involves the translator's interpretations his strategies and, abil and abilities as a translator. Now, what is the language of translation? It is the translator's interpretations and his strategies and his ability to translate. You can figure this out when you read the translated text because it is something abstract. You, as a reader or as a translator, you can find right away the characteristics of the, transla uh, the, the language of translation, the strategies the translator has used, or the ability of the, transla uh, the translator, or the interpretation of the translator of the source text into the target text. Now, the language of translation remains a subjective experience internalized in the translator and within limits of his or her interpretation. Again, it is something subjective. It is not objective. It has to do with the translator because he has done the translation. 
Studying the language of translation should cover a large sample of translations in as many languages as possible. Now, if you, if you, for instance, you want to do some research in the investigation uh, uh, on uh, on the language of uh, translation, you need to have so many samples from different languages, and then you could say, okay, the language of translation in Chinese or in uh, uh, into English or into French into uh, blah blah has got certain characteristics the translators abilities are blah blah or the uh, translators interpretation of this language or this uh, 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 culture are blah blah so you base your studies on a large sample of translations of as many uh, languages as possible now the target language this is the this is element number 6 this is element number 6 the target language the target language is the language into which a text from another language is translated the target language is the is the is the language into which a text from another language is translated. In other words, you have, it, you have a source language, Arabic source, source text, translator, translated text. The translator take the source text from Arabic and translate it, in, it into English. English is the target language. You want to translate it into uh, French. French is the uh, uh, target language. So this is very important. The translated text is formulated in accordance with the linguistic system and sociocultural norms of the target language. Very important point. It's a good point. Now, if you want to translate a text from Arabic into English, it's not only you are using English, but you have to use the linguistic rules of the English language. You have to use the cultural uh, uh, aspects of the English language. So you are using the target language uh, linguistic uh, aspects and cultural aspects. Target language, like any ordinary language, it is learned, studied by its native and non-native user without going into this, the question of translation. So the target language is an independent language. People use it, people learn it, and people study it, whether they are native or not native, like us, for instance. We, we, uh, uh, we learn English, we study English, we are not native, so it is like Arabic. We learn it, we study it, and so on and so forth. So a target language is an independent language. Now, the distinctive features of the language of translation are studied and measured with reference to the rules and norms of the target language. Now, if you want to, if you want to do any research or any study on the language of translation, you don't go to the source language, you don't do uh, uh, the language of translation on Arabic as a source language, but rather on English as a target language. So if you want to, uh, to, uh, to investigate the language of translation, let's say in, um, in 50 samples of, transla of different translations uh, in English, then you have to use the, uh, uh, the English as a target language and the text translated into English by different translators. And then you can say, okay, the language of translation of these translators uh, uh, using English as a target language is blah, blah, blah. So these are the six main elements of translation. By now you should, you should have knowledge of them. The source language, the source text, the translator, the translated text, the language of translation, and last but not least, the target language. Now, before I finish off this, call, uh, uh, this lecture, we need to see how these elements interact and how they work together. Now, look at this colorful slide.
please understand that they don't stand on their own. They really interact. Now you can see we have the source language, the source language, then we choose the text language, the source text, then the translator, then the translated text comes along as a result of uh, the translator working on the source text, then we have some kind of language called the language of translation, and then we have the target language. Now all these elements should be really looked at in a package. You can't just deal one on its own, no. As a translator, you need to, you need to be you need to be aware of all these elements, how they interact and how they uh, affect one another. So I hope this is clear and uh, I hope also that you have found this, uh, uh, this uh, lecture interesting. Thank you very much for uh, listening and watching uh, uh, this lecture.